Up next, Mario Joseph, former Muslim imam turned Catholic evangelist through an incredible story of discovery of Jesus Christ and also the persecution that comes with following Christ. Mario, as you'll discover, came to Christ and the Catholic faith through reading the Quran. And now my conversation uh, with Mario Joseph from his remote location in India. Hello, Mario. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome, my brother. I saw the interview that you did on YouTube with a Spanish interviewer, and I, I couldn't stop listening. I could have listened for a whole, <laughs> a whole hour or more about your background. Why don't you tell our audience a little bit about you and your, your Muslim upbringing? Okay. See, I was uh, born here in India in a state called Kerala and a small village or district called Vainat. My great-grandparents, they are not from India. They are uh, from Turkey, Istanbul. Mm-hmm. And uh, my surname here in India, for every family, there will be surname. So my surname is even today, it is Turkey. You know, the Indians pronounce not Turkey, they say Turkey. Turkey. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we are six children at home and I am third one. When I was in the womb of my mom, it was a complicated uh, pregnancy for my mom because there was an infection for her womb and doctors compelled her to abort and to remove her uterus. Yes. But my mom, since she is very good devotee of God, she offered the baby to God, saying that I will not abort my baby, even risking my life, I will, I will, I will survive. And she said, God, if you... If you give life for the baby, I will surrender this baby for you. Mm. And I personally believe that God heard that prayer. That's the reason I am alive. You know, I came to earth. And then uh, because of their offering to God, they did not send me for normal education. You know, in India, everybody send their children to the play school and first standard, second standard. They educate the children. But my parents never educated me because they said, you belong to Allah. You belong to God. Mm-hmm. And then when I was eight year old, they sent me to a Muslim Arabic college, intending that I must become a Muslim imam, imam, which means a kind of a priest. Yes. You know, there is no priesthood in Islam like Catholic Church, but uh, at the same time, there is imams, the leaders. So to make me an imam, they sent me to an Arabic college, and I did my studies for 10 years. I studied the... Uh, philosophy and theology, like metaphysics, epistemology, logic, mm-hmm. and then theology, moral theology, eco-theology, you know. And after my 10 years of studies, I became, I was ordained as a Muslim cleric or as an imam. And while I was serving in a Muslim masjid as an imam, I preached, vehemently I preached that there is only one God, his name is Allah, and there should be only one religion, that should be Islam, and there is only one true holy book, that is Quran. And after preaching these kind of things, I said that Jesus is not God, because Allah never married, so no children for Allah, so never called Jesus as son of God. This was my talk. And right. then somebody asked me and said that you don't explain so many things, you simply tell us who is Jesus. And this question hurt me, I began to think, who is Jesus? Mm-hmm. And with this question, when I read the holy book of Muslims, the Holy Quran, it is written in Quran that Jesus is Kalimatullahi wa Ruhullahi, the word of God and the spirit of God. So then my inquiry began to go very deep, began to think word of God, which means God himself, because when God is existing, the word and the knowledge of God also should exist. So I understood the word of God is inseparable from God. So we cannot separate word of God from God, and we cannot separate spirit of God from God. So spirit of God is God, word of God is God, and God is God. So, you know, this confusion led me to learn very deep all these subjects, and there was few arguments between me and my teachers and my colleagues and Muslim friends, and finally they all could not answer me. Their Final argument and final answer from them was, word of God is not the creator, not the creation. So I began to think, if the word of God is not creator, not creation, then we have to put the word of God somewhere. So I began to think then what the Christian says is true. You know, Jesus is the word of God, and we can call the word of God the son of God because he is with God, in God from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Hello, Nick. Are you with me? You're listening. Oh, 100%. Yes. I, I was thinking about Jesus' question to the apostles. Who do men say that I am? That was asked of you, right? Who is Jesus? Yeah. 
Yes, the same thing, yes. Yeah. Jesus himself asked the disciples, you know, what do you say, who are my mm-hmm. The same day somebody asked me, who is Jesus? And this question began to think and meditate and uh, led me to this fact. And more than this, what happened after all this understanding, uh, I was completely confused and I don't know uh, what to believe. And one fine day, I took my Quran and kept on my chest. And from the depth of my heart, I prayed and asked my God, Allah. Those days, I believed that Allah is God. So I said, Allah, I believe that you are my God and Quran is your word. And I don't know what to do now. I am completely confused because your Quran says uh, Jesus is still alive and he will come back. He healed the sick. He rises the dead. And he created a live bird with mud. And he cured blind men and leprosy, etc. But Prophet Muhammad is not the word of God, not the spirit of God. He never spoke when he was two days old, or he never created a live word with mud. He never cured anyone according to history. He himself died because of fever. He is not alive. He never raised any dead people in history. He will never come back. So I said, Allah, according to your Quran, Jesus is much greater than Muhammad. So let me accept Jesus. That was my question. I'm, I'm eagerly, from the depth of my heart, I said, Allah, tell me whom should I accept, Jesus or Muhammad? After that sincere prayer, I opened Quran. When I opened Quran, my eye fell on chapter 10, verse 94. There the mm-hmm. Holy Quran says like this, فَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي شَكِّمْ مِمَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ فَاسْأَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقْرَؤُونَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَقَدْ جَاءَكَ الْحَقَّ I uh, follow. Go ahead. <laughs> if you... Now, this is Arabic. Yes. Okay. The meaning is, if you have any doubt in this Quran, which I reveal to you, go and read the Bible or ask the people, those who read the Bible. So Quran says, if you have doubt in Quran, to read the Bible. Of course, Quran never mentioned the name Bible. Quran says Al-Kitab, the book. Mm-hmm. The book means it is three books according to Quran, Taurat, Zabur, Injil. Taurat means the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Zabur means Psalms of David and Solomon, including all prophetical and historical books of the Old Testament, yes. from Joshua till Malachi, including uh, deuterocanonical books according to Catholic Church. And then uh, when uh, uh, Injil means the New Testament, from Matthew to Revelation, all the 27 books. So the entire Bible was known as Al-Kitab in Quran, the book. So Quran says if you have any doubt in Quran, read the book, which means the Bible. And so you did. So that's how I decided to read Bible. Where did, you, where did you start, Maria, with the Bible? The Bible has 73 books. Where did you begin? Yeah, okay. I, I, I did not read the Bible directly. Once I was traveling in a bus in my hometown, I was... Traveling, then I met one Catholic sister, you know, this religious sister. She mm-hmm. belongs to a congregation called Petra Khat. Yes. So when I asked her about how can I get a Bible in Arabic, she said, uh, it is not possible here to get in Arabic. I said, I cannot follow any other language here. I cannot read and write any other language except Arabic. So then she told me that if you cannot read and write, I will send you a place where they are teaching Bible so you can understand. You go and listen. So I can understand the local languages of India, like Malayalam, Tamil, Kannada. Yes. Cannot write and read. So then she gave me the address. That's how I went to that place. That is, uh, personally, I'm speaking from that place. This mm-hmm. is called the Divine Rutit Center, run by Catholic fathers. And these fathers belongs to a congregation called the uh, Vincentian Congregation. Mm-hmm. And in this retreat center, we have retreat every week from Sunday to Friday. Five days, people are staying here. Uh, every week, minimum 10,000 people will be here in seven languages. English, Tamil, Kannada, Kongani, Hindi, Malayalam, and Telugu. Mario, I've read seven about this. I, just I want, I want to tell people about this because I've, I've read about this. The, if not one of the largest, if not the largest Catholic retreat center of its kind, correct? It's massive. Yeah, the, 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 this should be the world's largest retreat center because 365 days, Everyday retreats and the seven adoration chapels 24 7. What's it called again? Divine? Divine Retreat Center. Divine Retreat Center. Okay. Yeah, so you went there and you heard yeah, the scriptures I, I explained in the Arabic. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, after reaching here, the, there was Bible College. Here we have Bible College, three types of Bible College one month, three months, and one year. 
Mm-hmm. So I joined for that one month Bible course. So in that one month Bible course, first day, I heard from Bible John chapter one verse one onwards. Ah. In the beginning there was word. The word was God. The word was with God. The word became flesh. Mm-hmm. You know that that was my turning point. No, al principio existía la palabra. La palabra ya estaba con Dios. La palabra era Dios. Yes. This is this is uh, this. You know, it enlightened me like because I said. My Quran says that Jesus is the word of God, and now the Bible also says Jesus is the word of God. So I said I need both. My first thinking was I have to accept Quran as well as Bible. So one day I must go to Masjid, the Islamic mosque, and second day I must go to church, the Catholic church. This was my idea. Mm-hmm. I must accept Muslims also. I must accept Christians also, because both books are say, say the same. And then I thought the only difference between Islam and Christianity is Arabs are egoistic. They don't want to accept the Western world. And the Westerns are egoistic. They don't want to accept Arabs. That may be the, uh, you know, it may be the caste issue, not the theological issue. So th- this was my thought. While I was thinking all these things, you know, one another day I heard from Bible, same John chapter 1, verse 12. Their Bible, you know, Bible says, if anyone believe in Jesus, Jesus give power to become children of God. This was my first turning point, you know, uh, to receive Jesus. The reason, uh, according to Quran, you know, God has 99 names. And in that 99 name, they don't call God daddy. All other names they call they say if anybody call God daddy, it is blasphemy. They say they must kill them. The human cannot call daddy. And God will never call human beings as children also. Their relationship between Allah and human being is master and slave. Master and slave. Muslims, master and slave. All the Muslims must know that they are slaves. And Allah is master. So when we think, you know, when I was Muslim, I know he's my master and I'm his slave. So I was very afraid of my God. I never fall in love with my God. I could not love him because I know he's my master. He's only counting my sins, waiting to punish me. You know, that fear was in me. But when I realized that if anyone believes in Jesus, they will become children. You know what happened? Immediately I kneeled down there. I kneeled down there and I said, Jesus, I need you because I want to call God the creator of this universe, my daddy. This was my first prayer. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I need you because I want to call my God daddy. And there I understood, uh, uh, Islam says that Jesus is word of God, but Islam never claimed that if anybody accepts Jesus, they'll become children of God. And Islam never accepts that uh, God took, God God shared human life to give us, to make us share in his heavenly life. In another word that, you know, uh, at the time of mingling water in wine, the Catholic priest used to pray, you know, as you share our humanity, we share your divinity. Yes. So we, uh, I understood that Jesus came to earth to give me the life of God. It means to give me eternal life. That's what Jesus said, if you eat my body and if you eat my flesh, you shall never die. You will leave. So Mm -hmm. I understood that by attaining God's life, I am becoming a member of God's family. So there I can call God Daddy. And that may be the reason even St. Paul said the same, that we are the adopted children of God through the blood of Christ. And we can call him Abba, Father, through the Holy Spirit within us. Amen. Uh, Mario, I wanted to ask you about your family's reaction. But before I do that, I wanted to ask you about the Blessed Virgin Mary, yeah. because she's mentioned several times in the Quran. And how did the Blessed Mother uh, um, influence you, or how did you discover her uh, intercession for you and her motherhood of Jesus, the Son of God? How did that happen? Well, you know, when I was very small, um, there was a problem for my leg, my toe. It was a kind of infection due to the nail, some cracks. And then my mom took me to a hospital. And that name of the hospital was Fatima, Fatima Hospital. Yes. And for me, Fatima was the daughter of Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So I asked Umma, my mother, Mother, this hospital is run by Catholic fathers, Christian fathers, but they give the name hospital Fatima. 
why they took the name of Prophet Muhammad's daughter for their hospital. Then my mom explained me about uh, the Mother Mary who appeared in Fatima. So my mm -hmm. own mother explained me about uh, Mother Mary, and then she explained me from the Quran what all things Quran says about Mother Mary. Holy Quran chapter 3 verses uh, 34 onwards very clearly says that Mary was a uh, holy mother was born without original sin. And according to Islam, she never committed any sin in her life. And, uh, you know, according to Quran and Islam, she is ever virgin. And uh, chapter 23 verse 50 says, you know, even Mary went to heaven with her physical body. And Mary's the, even the, assumption the only... Is written in the Holy Quran. And Mary's the only female mentioned in the Quran, correct? Yes, yes. Among, you know, no other women's name in Quran. The only woman's name is Maryam. And not only that, there is a chapter in Quran called Maryam, chapter 19. The name of the chapter itself is Maryam. Mm. And, uh, and one another chapter, chapter 3, uh, it is family of Imran. And Imran is considered as the father, uh, father of Holy Mother according to Quran. So mm. chapter is family of Maryam. And Maryam's name, 34 places in Quran. 34, 34. not only one. Mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah, and the only woman named 34 times. And one mm -hmm. chapter dedicated for Maryam. So, and uh, almost, uh, almost all the things what Catholic Church teaches about Mother Mary written in Quran. So when mm -hmm. I read this, I thought what Mother Mary said is true, because she herself said in Luke chapter 1, from now on all generations shall call me blessed. So maybe when Muslims are reading Quran, even without their knowledge, they are saying that Mary is blessed. The next, the whole generation is calling her blessed. Yes. So the Quran says that Muhammad is a dead man. Uh, Jesus Christ is still alive. He can raise the dead. Yes. He can perform miracles. Yeah. His mother is mentioned yeah. 34 times. The only woman mentioned in the Quran. And yeah. at what point did you say, okay, there's something lacking in Islam that is found in its fullness in the Christian faith. Was that the answer to a prayer? Yes, answer to the prayer mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the assurance of forgiveness. Because mm -hmm. I know that I am a sinner. I have committed so many sins. But when I ask Allah, forgive me, forgive me, I am not sure whether Allah has forgiven me or no. Mm -hmm. But here I could confess my sin. And that was an assurance for my, you know, I... So, humanly, I got an assurance, a guarantee that God has been God forgive my sin. Yes. And this this was a this was a consolation or a peace for my personal life on earth. Mario, as and, you were, as I just wanted to ask you about, I'm just getting a little bit ahead of you here. Surely, you had met yes. Muslims who become Christians before, or you knew the treatment that Muslims receive from other Muslims when they become Christian. Were you? Yeah. imagining what would be your fate if you embraced this new faith? No, when I embraced this new faith, uh, I knew that my personal the thinking was within three months, they will kill me. That was my, my thinking. And I was ready for that because I thought if I want to become martyr, I will because when I leave, I must leave according to my consciousness. You know, mm -hmm. I already know the truth, so I have to leave for the truth and die for truth. That was my desire. And then uh, one fine day, uh, Muslims began to search for me and they found me in a Catholic retreat center and my dad came here and he beat me very badly. It, very bad means he beat me on my forehead and there was beating from my nose and I fell unconscious. With one beating I fell unconscious because that was so strong. And then uh, he took me home and he removed my clothes and he chained my hands and legs and he threw chili powder in my eyes, nose, mouth, and all the parts of my body, you know, different parts of my body. And, and since they chained me, I could not stand or I could not walk. I could not sit. I, I can only roll on the ground. And uh, mm -hmm. first two, three days, they did not give me food or water. And I was so weak and dried off, you know, dehydrated. And when I, when I asked for little water, you know, my lips broke and there was thick blood. I wanted to lick and wet my throat. Then my brother passed urine in my mouth. So that kind of uh, days have gone through there. And then after so many days, you know, because I'm not eating, I'm not drinking anything, not even water, uh, mm. my thinking capacity also lost. Like, you know, uh, I, I, I was not aware that I'm alive. 
Sure. Like a dead, unconscious mm-hmm. completely. And then one fine day, my dad thought that I'm no more. So he came to room and uh, he removed my chain and to check if there life in my body, he chopped my throat very really deep. When he chopped my throat very really deep, I couldn't breathe. I opened my eye. Then I could see my dad standing with a big knife. And he said that I'm going to kill you now if you need Jesus. And he said, this is what Quran says, that if anybody rejects Islam, he should be killed. So I'm going to kill you. So when he came to kill me, suddenly a thought came to me. Jesus said that do not be... Do not be afraid of a man who can kill your body. But be afraid of a man who can put your soul in hell. So I suddenly thought, my dad can kill only my body, not my soul. So when this thought came to me, I decided to say that I need Jesus and to die with his knife. When I decided, suddenly a light fell on my forehead from his knife. And it fell on my forehead and there was a kind of electric shock throughout my body. You know, I don't know how to explain a kind of energy passed my body. I was very skeleton, very bony, because no food, no water, so many days. But suddenly I got a powerful energy. I mm-hmm. pulled my dad's hand and cried out louder, Jesus. When I cried out, my dad, who was standing with knife, fell on the ground. And with the knife which he was holding, there was a big bone for his chest, and there was bleeding, and he was, there was a kind of fork from his mouth. My brother and mother all came and cried out, and they took my dad and went to hospital. When they were running to hospital, they forgot to lock the room from outside. And I came out of the room. I was very energetic, even though very skeleton. I came out, and I wore the dress of my dad, went to taxi stand, took a taxi, again came back to this divine routine center. And that particular day, I I became so confident that my Jesus is still alive. Because, you know, when I c- called his name, my dad fell on. He fell on Suppose his own. Suppose if uh, Jesus you, did not save me. When he heard the name of Jesus, I would have died for, he fell on his own knife. That's what you're saying, right? And the knife Pardon? pierced his... He fell on his knife. His knife, his own knife pierced his own chest. Yes. Okay. And you were able to escape. He fell down. Yeah. He, he held that knife to cut me, but he fell. When I called the name of Jesus louder, he fell on the ground, and that knife hurt his chest, and he got wound, my dad. Yeah. People listening to this, Mario, might be thinking that your father is very cruel, but have you pondered that he was probably afraid of the reaction of his master, Allah? He had to do this, correct? Not only not only the fear of Allah, the second is fear of society also. Mm. If he did not kill me, the Muslims will attack him. Mm. Muslims will ask him, why you are not uh, taking care of your son? You know, India is not like uh, America. Even though the children are grown up, they don't have full freedom. The parents always control them. Mm. And uh, if, if the children are not controlled by the parents, the society will control the parents. I see. So you made it back to so the retreat. So what you, happened after yeah. my conversion, after my conversion, the Islamic society put my parents out of the parish. They never got any entry to the parish. And they had a lot of suffering in society. Nobody talked to them. Nobody helped them. And they were totally alone in that community. And then the Muslims forced them to kill me. That's how they decided to kill me. Mm-hmm. So my dad became so cruel because of the society, first part. And second part, he loves his Allah so much. You know, in that way, I appreciate my dad because we called Abraham as the father of faith. Why? Because when God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, he was, he was ready. He said, yes, I am ready, Lord. So the same sacrificing uh, mind my dad also has. He says, I am ready to sacrifice my son for Allah. So in that way, I appreciate his faith, but it is not in the right track, that's all. If he has the same faith and same trust, in the right way, you know, it would have been better. It, and I, my, my prayer always for them is let them realize the truth. And I, I believe in the promise of Jesus that Jesus said, believe in me, you and your family will be saved. I don't know when and how, but Jesus is aware of everything. One day he will, he will bring them also to the uh, uh, eternal life. Have you forgiven your father and your family? Sure, sure, sure. Immediately, the same day, same day, I came out and I thank God for saving me and I asked God to give his health back and he was cured from all his uh, wounds and problems. 
and he lived another 10 or 15 years. Mm-hmm. And then uh, recently I heard that he is dead, but I could not meet or I could not go. Somebody informed me that uh, he is no more. He was a little elderly also. I see. So, and yeah, ha- I have forgotten. My mom is still alive. Have you have you gone back to the village? No, 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 no way. No way for me. You know what happened? My parents, uh, they made my statue and uh, they, uh, they conducted a funeral ceremony and they buried that statue in a grave and they wrote my birth date and my death date uh, is my baptism date. That was uh, uh, 1998, March 14. So that day they buried already. And uh, so if, if I go to my hometown, you know, there is a graveyard for me. That, that's my situation. I so I, I don't know. Uh, humanly speaking, I don't have hope that I can go and meet them very soon because Islamic, uh, you know, here in India now, they are becoming very fundamental. Yes. The influence of Pakistan and Afghanistan, Turkestan and uh, all is more in India. So now the young generation are very fanatic. Uh, so And the conversion also. Now the Muslims are, uh, you know, our Catholics are not very aware of their religion. So the Islam, Muslim fundamentalists go and uh, speak to them about Islam and convert this Christian to Islam. That also happening in India so much. So, uh, this you, kind of mm-hmm. situation here. So please pray for me. That's all I will say. Yes. Well, I'm happy to ask our whole listening audience to keep you in their prayers, Mario. Was your family a Sunni Muslim family? They are, they are Sunni. In India, mm-hmm. most of the 99% are Sunnis. Shiites are very few. Uh, do you believe that Islam is a heresy of Christianity or a kind of a, a, a misbegotten version of it or a mistaken certain elements of Christianity are, are kind of taken and twisted? I don't know if 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 you ask me like that authentically, I cannot say I cannot uh, pass a comment. But uh, I personally believe uh, we should. Ne- I n- I never believe that uh, uh, Quran is word of God, and I never believe that Muhammad is true prophet. So in that way, no connection between Bible and Quran because mm-hmm. even the name Allah is not uh, uh, found anywhere in Bible. Elohim is found. Eli is found. And, uh, you know, Yahweh is found, Adonai found, uh, but never found Allah anywhere. So that, uh, that Allah, the origin of Allah is from a moon goddess, Allah Ta. Yes. So that is a pagan god. So in that way, we cannot connect Christianity with the Semitic religion, with Judaism and uh, Christianity. Islam, you can connect with Zoroastrianism. It, it, they have a lot of teaching from Zoroastrianism because these five times of namaz was from Parsi religion, Zoroastrians. Mm-hmm. And this, uh, you know, the turning towards uh, Mecca, towards the sunset, you know, east is uh, the Zoroastrian religion. I see. And, uh, yeah, so Islam has much connection with Zoroastrianism, not with Christianity and Judaism. But because Muhammad was uh, lived in Arabia and there were so many Christian friends and Jewish friends, and since he married a Jewish lady, Khadija, he has the influence of uh, Old Testament and New Testament. Mm-hmm. So when he recited to the poem and all, it came from Bible also. But it doesn't mean that he has connection with Bible, you know. It, he, uh, Islamic connection directly go to Zoroastrianism, the concept of heaven, hell, evil, and uh, resurrection and judgment, and then five time namaz and uh, 30 days fasting and uh, moon month, you know, lunar month. Everything is from Zoroastrianism. I see. Why yeah, even the mm-hmm. Kaaba, you know, yeah, the Kaaba stone, yeah. Why Catholic and not Protestant, Mario? Pardon? Why Catholic? What what attracted you to the Catholic faith as opposed to any other? Uh, what I have seen here in uh, in India, these Protestant, they all live according to what they feel. The designing spirit sometimes is very difficult because uh, they say, "I am led like this. I am led like this." So. There is no unity. They themselves has a lot of problem fighting and every day. And it, 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 I have seen, I have seen very bad some places in uh, Kerala. So in that way, where I live, Catholic Church is very moderate and very polite and very stable. And uh, you know, it has a root. So that's how I was attracted to church. And then when I began to learn the church history, from the first, uh, third century, Nikias, you know, those onwards, I began to learn and came to French Revolution. 
and from Martin Luther and, uh, you know, all this history when I learned, this all is a kind of protesting only. You know, when they, when they all have some selfishness somewhere, the retaliation was there. So mm. I'm not saying that everything is bad or I don't accept or I don't read or don't go. I, I go with them and preach because ultimately they are proclaiming Christ. But being Catholic will have a root and, you know, you will have a leader always. Of course, it is not very easy because you have hierarchy system. So you will be questioned by your superiors and authority, bishops or cardinals or even to the... But you will have uh, guidance, proper guidance. And the second thing, Mother Mary and saints. You know, I, I respect my guardian angels and I respect all the saints who live and died. And I respect Holy Mother. So with the Protestants, I cannot have these heavenly beings with me. They, they completely reject and they say, you don't ask any help from them. Matthew. And the third thing that, you know, the confession, when I have a little guilt feeling, you know, kneeling down confessor, near confessor father and confessing my sin and getting atonement, it, it gives me a lot of freedom when I did it, which I did mm -hmm. not felt from Protestant church. And then third thing, the Holy Mass, they only say remembrance, remembrance, but what happened, uh, my personal belief, uh, I don't know whether... Uh, uh, Genesis is uh, history or mystery or it's a fake and all. That's not the question. But mm -hmm. it, it, we read in Genesis that Adam Eve ate the fruit. That was their sin. So the sin ended in our body by eating fruit. So the same way we can remove the entire sin by eating another fruit. That should be the heavenly bread. That should be the body of God to give me the life. So I, I personally know that I am receiving Jesus and his body and his blood in the Holy Mass. And I, do, I don't want to reject that and run away from there. So this is how so many, there are so many other reasons also personally when I pray. And, and I have been to, I mean, first entry was to this Divine Retreat Center, which is Catholic Retreat Center. And from here I have visited some uh, GFA, you know, Gospel for Asia, one church, and then another church called New India Church of God. And then I have been with the, uh, AGA, like all the Pentecostal churches, visited them and came back. Mm -hmm. But I am more peaceful and happy, and I encourage people to be a Catholic. Because mm -hmm. uh, let us be one all over the, you know, the church should be one all over the world. Yeah, amen. Uh, because of denomination, there should not be a fighting. Is most of your work uh, evangelizing Indians with Hindu background, or do you get retreatants from all over the world, or do you dialogue with Muslims at all, Mario? Yeah, also, I have, uh, see, I speak almost nine languages in India. So because uh, I know all these nine languages, I travel in different parts of India. And then uh, since I speak English as well as little Spanish, and then I travel outside India also, like Africa and uh, Europe and uh, Middle East. And then uh, uh, this is uh, next desire is to U uh, uh, United States. Only the one portion where I have not been is so far is United States. If God sent me, then I'll be there too. I can and tell you then, this. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Amen. And then uh, 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 among the Muslims, you know, after listening me over uh, radios and televisions and then uh, YouTubes and all, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. Muslims contact me with their queries. And when I slowly, slowly answer them online, you know, through the social media. And slowly they come to Christ and they accept Jesus and they worship Jesus. And one example, one gentleman, uh, he was a Muslim imam called uh, Muhammad Paul. He, he emailed me and I asked him to come and he came and we, he stayed with me for a few days and he learned very well and he joined our Bible college. He did Bible studies also. Now he has his own church, like he, he joined Pentecost group, but he has his own church in Dubai. And where the Arabs are attending his meeting every Friday, you know, uh, so one person, but he could convert hundreds of Arabs. Yes, he that's could bring true. them to Jesus, you know, to the truth. So this is how the mission is going on. I'm working among the Muslims as well as the Hindus, and among the Protestants also, and the atheists also everywhere. It is not that focusing one. Wherever I am, I want to glorify my Lord, and I want to bring the people to Jesus. That's all my desire. It's my, it's my passion. And the burning desire, which is given by the Holy Spirit. Have you thought about writing your account down into a book? 
Yeah, first, I have already written three books. The first one was my life history, uh, In Search of You, that was published in Malayalam in uh, Kerala and then translated into English and all other Indian languages. Recently, that is published in uh, Spain, mm -hmm. uh, published by a publisher called Libros Libras, Libros El Libras. And mm -hmm. when they publish it in Spanish language, they give the name Encontra a Cristo en el Coran. I found Christ in Quran. So that's the name of the book, uh, and that is available online purchase. I think uh, even from US, you can be, if those who want can purchase it. They can go to online shop this uh, Libros El Libras, and it is available. Okay. And then my second book is Salam or Jihad. You know, I am uh, working in a five Catholic seminaries as a professor. So mm. this is a pastoral course which I give for the seminarians. Uh, you know, the Islamology, what is Islamic concept of Jesus and uh, how we must evangelize Muslims and uh, how can we talk to Muslims, you know, this kind of subject. So for the seminary purpose, I wrote my second book, uh, Salam or Jihad, Peace or War. That's also a very nice book. Mm -hmm. And my third one is, uh, you know, it is a retreat, my retreat experience. Do you have a website, Mario? Uh, or can people... I don't have a website yet, but I am on uh, Facebook, uh, Mario Joseph, and uh, I am on uh, every government uh, Skype to evangelize Muslims. Every evening there will be Muslims with question on sure. Skype. So even uh, even from United States, if anybody wants to grow more on you know faith, they can uh, chat me on Skype, Mario what? Joseph thirty three. Mario Joseph thirty three. Yeah, 33 at yahoo.com is uh, everywhere. You know, the same email ID for uh, Facebook, sure. for Twitter, and for uh, uh, what you call WhatsApp, and for uh, uh, Skype. Everywhere the same, Mario Joseph 33. And uh, the Retreat Center in uh, Moringor, I want to give that website as well. That's drcm.org, correct? Yes, yeah, drcm.org. Drcm. Yes, correct, dot correct org. website. And just so listeners know, you, you chose the name Mario Joseph to honor the Blessed Mother in its masculine form for you, and Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, correct? Yes. Well, that's right. Really I love Mother Mary so much. That's how at the time of my baptism, uh, the, and my spiritual father asked me what name you need. I said, I need uh, Mother Mary's name. And then he said, uh, Mary is a woman name. You are man you cannot take. And that's how I did internet research. Then, uh, you know, I found Mario, an Italian word. Mario is for Mother Mary. Mother Mary's name for the male. So that's how I choose Mario. And then uh, since Mother Mary's name is already accepted, I said I need St. Joseph's name also, so mm -hmm. Mario Joseph. You're so right. they're my patron saints praying for me 24-7. You're set. You're ready. <laughs> That's great, Mario. <laughs> Please, God. Just, Mario yeah. Joseph, thank you so much for joining us on Catholic Answers Focus. I can guarantee you when you come to America, you have to visit us in San Diego, and um, I, I look forward to seeing the large crowds that will want to hear your story. It's really remarkable. It's obviously the grace of God, but it's also your courage, and I thank you so much for your time. Amen, and uh, you're welcome, my brother. So keep praying for me and ask all our viewers and listeners to pray for me. Wonderful. And uh, sometime, God willing, we will we will meet in United States of America. From your lips to God's ears, Mario. Thank you so much. We hope you've enjoyed the very first episode of Catholic Answers Focus, the new podcast produced by Catholic Answers. Share it with your friends, click subscribe, and spread the word. I'm Patrick Coffin. This is Catholic Answers Focus. Stay tuned for next week's exciting interviews. God bless you richly.